Welcome to AP Calculus Lesson 1.5a and again thank you to Mark Sparks for providing this curriculum that we're working through. Today we're going to talk about a continuity and how we actually define this, how we prove this through limits. And just informally we could discuss what does it mean to be continuous and continuous if uh, I had a little graph here and this was point A and this was point B and maybe we'll have a C in between. And a function that's continuous means that we would be able to trace from one point, say uh, if we we're going to be continuous from A to B, I would be able to trace my cursor along that function entirely put my pencil on it and trace all the way from A to C and never have to lift my pencil, never encounter a hollow dot. The function is defined everywhere from A to B and I don't have to lift my pencil. And that's how we've looked at it in pre-calculus continuous is I can put my pencil down and trace all the way along and never have to lift it up. But for instance, this would not be continuous from A to B because as I was going, I would suddenly have to lift my pencil and go to the new spot in order to move on. So it would not be continuous across C. I have a discontinuity here. I could also have a discontinuity. I'll uh, call this A and B and C in between. I could have a discontinuity that would look like this. So if I go to trace here, I'm tracing and tracing and tracing, but I hit this empty spot. And if we think of our continuity as if we were kind of walking along a little hill here, when I hit this hollow point, ah, I fall through. I would have to lift my pencil in order to get to the other side, kind of hop across it in order to move on. So this would be discontinuous at C as well. And in previous lessons, we've said that this discontinuity right here, we would call this a jump discontinuity. This discontinuity here, we would call a point discontinuity. And we had one other type of discontinuity where we would have an asymptote, and maybe it would look like this and like this. And here we would have uh, either an asymptotic or an infinite infinite discontinuity, referring to the fact that I'm approaching infinity as I approach that value. So these are my three main types of discontinuities that I can see, and it's easy to kind of identify visually. Yeah, this is discontinuous here. Sure, this is discontinuous here. Yep, discontinuous there. But when we're not given a graph, when we're given an analytic function, how can I tell if a function is continuous across a given domain say maybe from A to B, or across a particular point, uh, say is it continuous or discontinuous at C. And we're going to explore this and see how can I tell uh, whether a function is continuous using limits. This is something that is made available to us now that we have this understanding of limits. And this is going to have uh, three parts, but you're going to figure out what those parts are by completing this exercise. So we're given this graph here, and down here we're asked to find, is the function defined? And if so, what is its value? And I'm going to do these first two at x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 3 with you. And then I'm going to ask you to complete the rest of the chart, and then we'll examine those results together. So at x equals negative 6, I'm asked, is the function defined? If so, what is its value? So here is negative 6. This is all x equals negative 6. Is the function defined somewhere along negative 6? I can tell that the function's kind of going on over here. It's defined in the neighborhood of negative 6, up here around 5. But this hollow point here indicates to me that my function is not defined at this point. So I can go in and say, no, it is undefined. How about at x equals 
negative 3. So go up and look at, at negative 3 is here. What is going on with my function? Is it defined? Down here I have a place where it is not defined because of this hollow point. My function is not defined at negative uh, for a y value of negative 3. It approaches. I have a right-handed limit, but it's not defined at this point. However, I do find that the function is defined at x equals negative 3 up here. And the y value that it's defined for is 2. So that's what I'm going to fill in down here is 2. Let's look at the next column. What is the value of the limit from the left? So we'll start with negative 6, my left limit value. I approach a value of 5. Is the function defined there? No, but I don't care. I just want my left limit. What value am I approaching? I am approaching a value of 5. So I can fill that in here. I am approaching 5. How about for x approaches negative 3? As I approach negative 3 from the left, I approach a y value of 2. We can fill this in for 2. How about the limit from the right? As I approach negative 6 from the right, from right of negative 6, I also approach 5. As I approach negative 3 from the right, I approach negative 4. Therefore, what is my two-sided limit? Well, for x approaches negative 6, my left limit equals my right limit, and 5 is a real number, so my two-sided limit is 5. But at x approaches negative 3, my left-sided limit does not equal my right-sided limit, so my two-sided limit does not exist. Looking at the graph then visually, is my function continuous at that value, at negative 6 or at negative 3? And looking at negative 6, we see that this is one of those point discontinuities. If I'm a little guy walking downhill here, okay, I'm going to plunge to my death. It is not continuous. I would not want to walk along a bridge with a big hole in it. That would not be a continuous bridge. I want a continuous bridge. So this is not continuous, no. And at x approaches negative 3, as I approach negative 3, doo -doo 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 -doo, going along, and I would have to jump way down here in order to continue along my function. So this is not continuous, this is a jump discontinuity. It is also not continuous. All right. Go ahead and do the rest of these, x equals 0, 2, 6, and 8. Pause the video, and when you're finished, you can come back and check your answers. Okay, these are the answers you should have found. These are the answers you should have found. And let's glance at just a few of these. At x approaches 0, my function was defined at negative 1. My left limit was negative 1. My right limit was negative 1. When asking about my two-sided limit here, I asked, does my left limit equal my right limit? Yes. Are they a real number? Yes. Therefore, this is my two-sided limit. Looking at that, uh, as x approaches 0, seeing visually what continuity looks like, this is x approaches 0 right here. I can, I can see that my little guy would, it's a bit of an uphill climb, but he could just walk right along there without any uh, jumps or holes or uh, infinitely steep curves or anything. You just walk along that way. So that is a continuous function. Um, another thing to point out, it x approaches 2. My left limit is infinity. My right limit is negative infinity. My two-sided limit does not exist, not only because my left limit does not equal my right limit, 
but even if they did, they're infinity, which is not a real number. And we see graphically this function looks something like this. It's not continuous. This side of the function goes up until it's practically straight up. That little guy's just going to slide back down. And then this one's going to come uh, very, very steeply up here. And it's not continuous. I can't just, at no point do I walk so high up here that I come back around the bottom. This is not around a globe. We're assuming a flat plane geometry here. At x approaches 6, my left and right limits do not equal each other, therefore my two-sided limit does not exist. And as x approaches 8, my left limit does equal my right limit, therefore my two-sided limit does exist. But looking at this one, it's still not continuous at x approaches 8. Even though my left limit equals my right limit, my little guy is still going to fall through the hole and kind of bounce on the function there as he goes. So looking at all of these, we have only one case where my function is continuous at that value, and that is that x approaches 0. So take a moment and note what is unique about this set of values compared to the others. Well, my function is negative 1. My left and right limits are negative 1. Therefore, my two-sided limit is negative 1. This is the only case in all six of these where my function equals my two-sided limit. Here, my function was undefined. Here, my two-sided limit did not exist. Here, my function was undefined. And my two-sided limit did not exist. My two-sided limit does not exist. And here, they're both defined. They exist. But negative 4 does not equal negative 2. They're not the same. Only at x approaches 0 does my function equal my two-sided limit. And this leads us to our three rules. This is a little bit of a contrast to when we talked about our limit existence theorem. As a brief review, my limit exists if my left limit equals my right limit equals some real number b. And we talked about how the value of the function has nothing to do with what the two-sided limit is. And that's true. But the value of my function does count when determining, is my function continuous? Is this function continuous? All right, so we have three parts to our limit existence theorem. And looking back at our example, we can see, first of all, our function, whatever that is, must be defined. We looked at examples where the function was not defined. At no point where the function was undefined was it also continuous. So the function must be defined. Secondly, the limit. As x approaches that value, must exist. If the limit fails to exist, the function is not continuous. We can see some examples of each of these. Uh, here are examples where my function was not defined. And here are examples where my limit did not exist. Did not exist at 3. Did not exist at the asymptote. This is also an undefined. And my two-sided limit did not exist here. Then we have one more. This one right here on the right. Mark this in green. Seems like a good candidate. The limit exists. The limit is negative 2. The function exists. The function is negative 4. But we still have this hole here that will drop down because in order to be continuous, the function must equal the limit. My function, whatever that function is defined at, must equal the limit, the value I'm approaching, in order for the function to be continuous. All right, we're going to look at some examples that how can we apply this? 
But these three parts are things that you're going to need to know. You should have these memorized. Just like if you're asked, uh, how do you know if the limit exists? How do you find the limit? Well, the left limit must equal the right limit. And the number that they equal each other and the number that they equal must be a real number. Similarly, you need to be familiar with how can you determine if a function is continuous? Well, the function must be defined, the limit at that value must exist, and the function must equal the limit. On the next page, we're looking at some specific examples. We're scaffolding this a bit with the graph. So we're look, still looking at the graph, but practicing applying the three parts of limit-based continuity, the definition of limit-based uh, continuity. Definition of continuity. So we're going to look at these three. Our first one asks, as x approaches negative 8. So we'll mark this here. Negative 8. And we want to test the three parts of the continuity definition. As we recall, part one asks, part one asks, is the function defined? Is g of negative 8 defined? Looking at negative 8, yes, it's defined right here. g of negative 8 is defined, and it equals 4. I'll just make that as a note. It is defined. and is defined. Write that out. Point out, yes, the function is defined. That's necessary for continuity to exist. Part 2. Does the limit exist? Well, here's my function. I approach from the left, and I approach a y-value of negative 5. I approach from the right, and I approach a y-value of negative 5. So yes, my limit as x approaches negative 8 um, exists the function g of x and equals negative 5. So far so good. 2 out of 3. My continuity is looking good, but we can check the third part of our continuity theorem. Does the function equal the limit? And since the function is 4 and the limit is negative 5, no, they are not equal. Therefore, we can use our little plots here. Therefore, g of x is not continuous at x equals negative 8. I'll go ahead and write this down here in this box here. I'm going to erase and reuse that information for number two. Okay, next we'll be checking continuity as x approaches negative six. Three parts to check. First part, the function g of negative six. Looking at negative six here, does my function exist? And if so, what is its value? g of negative six exists right here, and its value is negative seven, and it is defined. Equals negative seven and is defined. Second part of our continuity asks about the limit. Well, my limit from the left approaches negative 7, and my limit from the right approaches negative 7. Therefore, my two-sided limit, as x approaches negative 6 from both sides, equals negative 7, and therefore it does exist. my two-sided limit exists. My third part asks, does my function equal my limit? Does my function at negative 6 equal my limit as x approaches negative 6? My function was negative 7, and my limit was negative 7. They are equal. Therefore, g of x, g of x is continuous 
it is continuous at x equals negative 6. Finally, number 3 asks, as x approaches negative 4. So we're going to check the three parts of our limit existence theorem first. What is the function at negative 4? Negative 4. Here's my negative 4. My function is defined here, which is a y value of negative 5. So this equals negative 5, and it is defined. Number 2, does my two-sided limit exist? As I approach negative 4 from the left, I approach negative 5. But as I approach negative 4 from the right, I approach a y value of negative 2. So my limit as x approaches negative 4 of the function g does not exist because the left limit does not equal the right limit. In more formal format, we would write the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left of g of x does not equal the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right of g of x. Therefore, I don't even need to check the third requirement. Obviously, my left and right can't equal each other if my limit doesn't exist. So therefore, uh, g of x is discontinuous. It is discontinuous at x equals negative 4. And I can see that here. I would have to jump a very long ways, star basketball player, in order to move on with my function. This is not continuous at negative 4. Okay, now that we've become a little bit comfortable with the continuity theorem and the definition of continuity graphically, we can start to apply this analytically where we can't see as obviously whether the function's continuous or not. So we want to see, is the function continuous at x equals negative 2 for number 4? And remember, we have the same three parts first. Is the function, this time the function is f, is the function defined at negative 2? And looking at the three parts of my piecewise defined function, I see that this part of the function defines at x equals negative 2. So this would be what f of negative 2 would be. My rule is uh, 3x plus 2. So yes, it's defined. It's defined as 3 times negative 2 plus 2, or negative 6 plus 2, or negative 4. That is what, how my function is defined at negative 2. Part 2 asks, does my two-sided limit exist now? Because I can't just look at this graphically, I need to analytically evaluate my two-sided limit, which is going to be my left limit and my right limit, and they should equal each other. So I need to know, does my left limit, my left limit is this x is less than negative 2 definition, the limit of negative 2 times the square root of x plus 6, does this equal my right limit? my limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function. This is my right limit. e to the x plus cosine pi x. In order to evaluate these limits, we're going to use some direct substitution here. I'm going to plug my negative 2 in at x, x and x. On the left, this is pretty straightforward. Negative 2 times negative 2 plus 6. On the right, I have now e to the negative 2 plus cosine negative 2 pi. Checking our unit circle real quick. Uh, this coordinate at negative 2 pi is here. Negative 1, 2 pi, right there. And this coordinate is 1, 0. x is cosine, y is sine. So the cosine of negative 2 pi is 1. We can simplify now. Negative 2 square root of 4. Is that equal to, uh, we'll write this 1 over e squared 
plus 1. Mm, this is negative 2 times 2, negative 4. This does not equal 1 over e squared plus 1. Because my left limit does not equal my right limit, my function is not continuous. My function is not continuous at x equals negative 2 because my left limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of f does not equal my right limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So when I hit this step and found out, nope, my two-sided limit does not exist. My two-sided limit does not exist. My limit as x approaches negative 2 does not exist because my left limit does not equal my right limit. Therefore, my function is not continuous at x equals negative 2. Number 5 is similar. And it's asking, is my function continuous at x equals pi? First part of my continuity definition, is the function defined at pi? And if so, what is its value? So looking at the different parts of my piecewise defined function, this upper portion here is for values less than pi, but not at values equaling pi. Looking at my bottom function, this is for all values greater than or equal to pi. Therefore, this gives me my definition of pi. It is defined, and I can evaluate that at uh, pi. e to the pi times a tangent of 3 pi over 4. Go ahead and uh, do our trick here. 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant sine and cosecant are positive there. My reference angle is pi over 4 and my reference triangle has sides of 1, 1, radical 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent or 1 and tangent will be negative in this quadrant therefore this is negative 1 e to the pi times negative 1 equals negative e to the pi. So that's how my function is defined. Part 2 asks about my two-sided limit. So the two sides of my limit, my limit from the left as x approaches pi uh, from the left, that would use this definition, e to the x cosine x. Does that equal my right limit, my limit as x approaches pi from the right? And this gives me my values greater than pi, so I'm going to use this function here e to the x, tangent 3x over 4. The convenient thing is here, we already found e to the x, tangent 3x plus 4, evaluated at pi here, and my result was negative e to the pi. So I already know that my right limit equals negative e to the pi. And now I just need to evaluate my left limit. Evaluating at x equals pi, I get e to the pi cosine pi, checking my unit circle for pi, that's coordinates negative 1, 0, x is cosine, y is sine, we're finding cosine is negative 1. So e to the pi times negative 1, does that left limit equal negative e to the pi? And I could go ahead and simplify this one more step, negative e to the pi equals negative e to the pi. Yes, it does. They are equal. My final step, running out of room here a little bit, does my function equal my two-sided limit? Well, my function here was negative e to the pi. And my two-sided limit here, limit as x approaches pi 
equals my left limit equals my right limit was also negative e to the pi. So my function does equal my limit. Therefore, g of x is continuous. It is continuous at x equals pi.